Леха Лайден. Хоша мади Лайден. Здравствуй, Лайден. Hello, Лайден. Bonjour, Лайден. Hello, Лайден. Marhaba, Лайден. Ciao, Лайден. Hi, put I Лайден. Hello, Лайден. Welcome to the next episode of our weekly English speaking show. And our show is about stories. Stories of international community living in Лайден. Today, in our studio, we have two amazing guests with their stories. We have Ariane Vasquez and Verna Tiro. Welcome to our studio. As a tradition of Hello Leiden show, we usually ask our guests to bring little items that has an emotional value for them. So we have asked both of you to bring something that has an emotional value for you. Um, shall we start from you, Adian? What did sure. you bring us? Well, I brought with me, well, I always bring this with me actually, and it's uh, my house keys. Um, I do have like a keychain collection at home. And um, with this house key, I have um, three of um, my uh, most, uh, let's say, um, uh, precious or uh, yeah, significant um, keychain. And one is um, a Vespa that I got uh, from Rome. Uh, this is the first um, city I've been to in Europe. And um, my work uh, keychain, it's a hard hat because I, used to, uh, I uh, work for construction as well. And um, it's a, this is a jade stone that I uh, given to me by my um, brother-in-law. And it's uh, for good luck. And also my house keys that is uh, basically, a, it signifies um, us um, with my family having roots here in Leiden because we bought a house uh, a few years back. And so, yeah, it's, uh, this is my uh, precious, uh, significant object. Thank you for sharing with us. You wouldn't want to lose... Uh a bundle of all these memories with you, right? No, no, definitely not. So I always uh, make sure that I have them whenever I leave and whenever I, before I come back home, I always uh, check my keys and uh, yeah, it's uh, very precious. So yeah. Keep it safe. Yes. <laughs> so Verna, what did you bring us today? I, yeah, I brought something I brought at Alberheim, <laughs> but I really like because it's, uh, it's the tulips and I really love them because I think they're like me in in a sense. You know, uh, they come from a foreign land and they were, uh, in the end, they uh, Netherlands embraced them and they, they thrive. And I think uh, something like that is happening with me right now. So to me, it, it, it's a symbol. It's something that means a lot. So we recorded a short profile about each of you that shares um, your story, basically. And why don't we start from you, Ariane? Let's see, where did you take us? Yeah, sure. Um, we went to the park, uh, so let's see. Uh, I really like this park. Um, it's uh, in the Stevenshof area. And the Stevenshof is actually, um, I don't know if a lot of people know this area. It's a very um, family neighborhood, let's say. And uh, so this park is uh, not so big, but it's also not so small. So it's, uh, and there's not a lot of people. So that's why I really like this uh, area. Um, it's re newly renovated and um, there are a lot of things to do here close by. There's, as you can see, there's the shopping area. Um, we have like our favorite gelato uh, place here. My husband is Italian, so uh, he approved of the gelato. So if you want to go gelato, there's a, a nice one around, uh, by the corner. There is also here the uh, animal uh, park, so you can see some, uh, some animals that uh, if you want to, uh, yeah just a walk and see some sheep, you know and uh, so it's it's a very nice uh, place so that's why I really like it you know to uh, to just have a walk. Uh, my husband came here before me and so uh, he found a PhD uh, here in uh, actually in Delft and uh, so I come from Singapore to here so yeah it's about it's uh, with um, yeah I followed my heart basically. <laughs> I really love the Netherlands um, except the weather sometimes <laughs> As I think with every uh, expat is, I'm from a very uh, um, warm country, as I've mentioned before. And uh, for me, the cold and the gray especially is a little bit tough. Be uh, truthful and uh, be um, conservative with your expenses. So if you have limited money, you look into what are you spending on and you first try to see which are the needs and which are the wants because sometimes we maybe you know we don't have a job and then uh, you go online and you uh, shop all the time so 
you know that's a, that's something that you have to be uh, um, truthful to yourself so is it something that you need or something that you want so this is a picture of uh, my son when he was born and uh, the parents of my uh, husband that came to help us during the first uh, uh, weeks that he was uh, <laughs> um, here and uh, so yeah it was uh, it's really a um, different uh, uh, feeling because of course I mean you know uh, someone that is uh, living alone and just with uh, with my uh, husband it's a uh, it's different to be with a with a kid so we did we didn't like really big um cities like uh, rotterdam or the hague or amsterdam and we really like something like small but still international and uh, coming from delft i thought that i would actually miss delft but uh leiden is a very beautiful city so i i really like it there's the city center that is really nice and uh um and so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so okay. you can see uh, it's a very family uh, <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> neighborhood, yes. So you took us to a beautiful park. Amazing. Um, so far, Leiden has been having a very cold and gray and dull spring. How have you been coping with this? Yeah, so um, actually, indeed, it's uh, quite uh, difficult, uh, let's say. Um, I come from the Philippines, so I'm used to warm weather. And after living uh, in the Netherlands for quite a while, of course, I got used to the colder climate. But when it's so gray, it's uh, still, you know, uh, it's uh, really um, challenging, let's say. So I'm really hoping for the, some sun to do some barbecue and uh, like really be out and uh, like after dinner, go back outside and just walk, you know, and have some fresh air. So uh, let's hope. I'm just hoping. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> and Verna, uh, you invited us to your house. Yeah. Um, Let's see, what did you tell us? Let's see. I originally came to do a research master's at the University of Groningen. And yeah, that, that's the reason why I came here. The, I had to choose between Netherlands and Israel, uh, Saudi Arabia, and the United States. So I'm glad I came here. <laughs> because identity is the name we have, the face we have the clothes we use, the language we talk, the nationality we have, and the country we live in. It's so much, so many things at the same time that when I changed and I transitioned, I had to change many things. I, you need therapy for these kind of things because there are so many changes at the same time that, yeah, makes you unstable. Right now, I, I feel more stability as, as, a, as a woman, and I present myself as a woman, and I see the changes, not only uh, that come from within, but also the changes that come from how people treat me, how society treats me. <laughs> That's a very difficult question because everything was difficult. I mean, um, the first of all, accepting, and then, learning makeup because nobody taught me everything was through uh, youtube <laughs> nowadays you, you can do a lot of things there um the legal part uh, was also very complicated the fight with the end there well well not fight but to understand how the legal system works I requested asylum, they denied actually. We went to court. We were to three different courts and they denied every time because of the country I came from. Hey, that's a very difficult question. I think uh, there's, I mean, nowhere in the world is easy to find. And when I started dating, I started using social media because it was easier and safer. As a trans person, just dating anybody it can be a problem. Um, I had an idea what I expected, what I wanted. And the first thing was I wanted to be treated nicely. And most people, this is one of the things about uh, gender expectations. Men want to see pictures of you. And they don't want to see any picture. They want to see the body. They want to see uh, how you look like with uh, 
a bikini, for instance, and it's not really something that society cares about. It's more about your ideas. And I started science, so it was very difficult to to put these two together because for me it's important how I think and for society it's more important how I look. <laughs> Never really requested uh, pictures like that. So that's that was something very important to me. And he treated me really as, as, a, as a human being. You know, he never asked anything about surgeries. He never asked anything about hormones, which was also a question when you are upfront about being trans. It's some of the questions, um, especially men, uh, start wondering about uh, the body, the, the, the hormones. And it's, it can be when you are not stable, it can be very uh, confronting. It's a diploma I had, I got from the University of Leiden. Um, it's very nice because it's the first official document I have since I changed, I legally changed my name and gender. Can you see? So yeah, it is it's very nice. I mean, and it's from a class I took was uh, cultural studies last semester. And I'm waiting for a new, yeah, a new one because I already took another class. So, yeah, I, I, I am coming back little by little to this. Great story. Thank you for sharing it with us. And we are really happy that you chose Netherlands. Yeah, very happy that they accepted me. <laughs> um, so far, the um, situation with the IND has been very complicated. Was there a moment that you regretted that you chose Netherlands out of all those countries that you had an option to go to? I mean, I think... Sometimes in life we regret many things, uh, but those are moments in life and when you look at the big picture, I think uh, in the end there are processes, there are legal processes that some countries have because migration is a very difficult topic. It's not as easy as some people uh, think. Um, so I... I, I look for you know i look it back and i understand what happened i actually took a couple of courses at the university of uh, leiden and i realized that it works like that for a yeah for a reason it would be better if um like as any algorithm you know the more input you put the better result you get and i think um in order to improve the, the system, how it works, we need that people follow the procedure. Beautiful way of uh, putting up your patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really need a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah, definitely you do. <laughs> um, so, Ariane, where does your financial management interest come from? Is it from the family, someone did around you that uh, embarked an interest in the subject? Yes, well, um, you know, I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I come from the Philippines and my family are uh, basically not really well off. Um, there were some points in, uh, in our lives, in my family's life, that uh, my parents were earning enough to sustain us. But as time goes by um, and uh, me growing up, I realize that it's not really all, you know, um, fun. And then you, uh, I see how uh, my family struggles. You know, sometimes we could couldn't even uh, um, buy food. So with that, I, uh, I have um, already experienced that, and I have already thought to myself that, you know, I don't want this life forever. I want to do something about it. And uh, from that, I uh, try to uh, learn about personal finance and uh, I see everyone around me in the Philippines. And also when I, I, I went abroad, that a lot of Filipinos, uh, are struggling like this, uh, you know, they go out of the country and then they help their family and still they're struggling uh, at the end of their working career, they go back and then they struggle again. So with this, um, uh, 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 this uh, stories that I uh, knew, I really wanted to uh, teach people to be able to be financially um, uh, intelligent, let's say. What a journey. Yeah. Um, Verna. Congratulations on your certificate from Leiden University. Thank you very much. Um, so 
uh, what was it like to study at Leiden University as a foreign student? Uh, I mean, the program inclusion is very, very nice because, as the name says, you know, it, it includes everybody. And at the very beginning, I was a little bit um, hesitant because I'm trans and it's not very common to see trans people at the university. I mean, at least from, from where I come from. I'm, I'm Mexican and it's not something you see uh, very often. And I... And I know it's not something you see very often here because I met some students also who made some comments in Spanish and I speak Spanish. So they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I knew it was also interesting, but um, I think the harder things are in the end, you value them the most, like, like you, right? Yes, exactly. Um, Werner, you mentioned um, about your trans journey, and you have been the uh, you are the oldest son of the family, basically. Um, and I know in the in the culture they place a lot of expectation um, on the oldest children, especially if they are basically male. Um, what was your coming out uh, like uh, with your family? What was their reaction like? Of course, I think it's not that. Um... Trans is a very new term. Um, of, of course, I think when before something uh, is described, can be described, you need a word for it. Mm. And there was a time in my culture, in my language, where that word didn't, didn't exist. So at the beginning, I thought I was gay. And But when you start... Yeah, moving on in life and learning about it and, and getting to know more people, you realize it is not the label, if you want to call it, that it's for you. And um, so I think I, I forgot about it and I didn't think about it until I arrived here to the country. And I met a transgender, a trans woman, who was the uh, in charge of the financing department at the UMC Health. And I thought, what are you waiting for? And yeah, and I started with some good and bad experiences. Um, but I think uh, in the end, everything worked out. Uh, did you share? Um, how did you share it with your family? Ah, that's a very interesting thing. Uh, actually, I came out the same day that Trump announced his victory. <clears throat> I came out on Facebook because I, I couldn't believe that I was just holding back, and 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 some people who do some things that are not very nice, you know, they 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 mm. they show up and they speak up so um, surely about some things. So. I couldn't stand it anymore, and I just, I just did it. It was a, a, a it was a picture on my Facebook, and from them, I think like I have been gathering strength, because uh, it's a difficult journey, mm. but uh, you get to know yourself, and yeah. Ariane, what was your family like while you were growing up? Um, are you the only child or you have siblings? What was that relationship like? Well, um, we are actually seven kids in the family. You know, uh, we are... Uh, Philippines is a very Christian, Catholic uh, um, country and uh, family planning and that sort of stuff is uh, something that uh, the Catholic Church are always like, no, you shouldn't uh, do birth controls and that kind of stuff. The reality is that if you have to send seven kids to school and you didn't plan them very well, you end up not being able to send anyone at all to school. So so there's that. Um, but of course, I mean, I did have also good memories um, mm. 
like when there are parties, we have extravagant parties, you know, and then when, uh, when there are normal days, then we don't have anything to eat, you know, so this like, I think it's really the uh, same, yeah. maybe probably in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly like that. We have to blame the, the Spaniards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been colonized by Spaniards, but uh, it's the same in my country, in Azerbaijan, basically, so we have lots of similarities on that end. I guess the southern you go, the concept of money changes um, for the people and the culture of money and also the relationship with the money changes. I was wondering if you have like any phrase, like in, in Mexico we say Dios proverá, like God will give, yeah. you know? God will provide. Yeah, yes. God will provide, yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have this, of course, and the, and also a lot of like poor families in the Philippines as well, they, also, they tend to have more kids because they think that their kids will... Uh, take them out of poverty. So basically what I do is I uh, coach individuals, especially um, migrant uh, immigrants, so uh, um, Filipinos and uh, um, people that went abroad to help their families. So um, maybe they have gotten a good job abroad and they try to help their family uh, back home. So I, uh, I coach them to be able to, for example, reach their dreams. Fantastic. Um, Verna, you have been supporting LGBTQI community in Assetes. <clears throat> For Selsec of the Leiden, we organize activities online because I joined in October. For people who live in Sayatases, who belong to the LGBT community, and it's very, uh, it's a very nice thing because I remember when I was living in Sayatases. I mean, I requested asylum, but they denied. But when I was living there, there is a lot of uh, rejection and there is a lot of um, there is a huge stigma because there are many cultures together and wherever there are many cultures together there is problem population inside that says <clears throat> struggles a lot with rejection and also with suicide which is something you can see uh, a lot but it's just the emotions and I guess many people who yeah with with corona they know what it's like to deal with their emotions. So nice that you're sharing your um, experience with also the newcomers uh, who are who have just arrived in the country and not really aware of uh, the implications, right? Yeah, yes, exactly, because it's another culture and sometimes we don't realize that it's not that one culture is better than another, mm. it's just that it's different and, and we have to understand that. You know, at the beginning I have my boyfriend's Dutch and there was a time when, whenever I, when I met him, like at the beginning, I was like, "Why is he so selfish?" But yeah, throughout time, I learned that he's not selfish all the time. It's only some things. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay because I, I, it has helped me to, yeah, to realize what I can do, and by myself, which is always very nice because I think uh, I wouldn't have done it without him so yeah it, it has some a bright side too yeah Ariane you also have a, a partner who yeah. doesn't share the same culture as you do right you, you yeah, mentioned he's um, Italian yes he's Italian um actually uh, we do have uh, similarities also in some aspects but not entirely of mm. course um, I think that um, uh, Italians are very warm people like the Filipinos like the Mexicans like you know, um, Spanish or Greeks, and uh, uh, they are definitely uh, l uh, close to their families as well. At least my husband's family, they're close. Uh, uh, they have a close family uh, um, tie, mm. and that's something that I resonate with as well. Um, but there are also other things that are different. So, for example, they tend to communicate more, <laughs> which is not in with, uh, with my family. They're not. When we talk about uh, transgenders, there's a lot of um, sexual objectification placed on the individual going through this. Um, what was your experience like? Yeah, I mean, it's not only uh, like like the, the, the sexual part, you know, like you become an object of a study in the case mm. of uh, the hospital where I, I have my traject and also yeah, with migration also you become like an object, uh, a person that's a foreigner that's trying to stay here in, in the country under specific circumstances 
because work, because re family relationship. With uh, interactions, I think it's a little bit um, interesting because some people make the connection with with sexuality, but I also think it's because women in general are seen are as sexual objects, and whenever you you change. First of all, for for men, for masculinity, it's it's that's a threat. It's a threat. It's something that shouldn't happen, and it's so common that even men insult themselves using feminine words or words that, that allude to femininity. You know, um, that's one of the things. Uh, now, for before I met my my partner. When I was opening profiles and using dating apps, it was such a horrible experience for me because they always wanted to see pictures of my body, you know, or pictures, and they, they were wondering whether I had surgeries and whether I had hormones. And it was, uh, I, there was a point when I felt so degrading. You know, it was mm -hmm. so degrading to, to have to explain my changes, which are by themselves uh, strong really? enough, yeah, difficult Tough, enough. I can imagine. Yeah, exactly. And it's very, it's also very, very difficult because sometimes when you are alone, you want to get to know people. You want to date like anybody else. And then you see these kind of things, and it's one of the two sometimes. No? Uh, maybe you have to big choices. One is you accept people who make you feel like garbage mm. or you don't accept anybody. You know, there was a time I counted it. I stopped counting when there were 2,000. I said, no, 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 no. Pictures, no pictures, no, uh, because uh, there was a video call and, and you know, sometimes they, they, they wanted to do, I, I was thinking, how is, it, how is this possible? I, I don't see a woman asking, well, maybe there are some, right? Asking for nude pictures. I mean, I, I know, maybe because I come from a culture where that's a taboo. Mm, Sex is a taboo. Definitely. It's something that happens inside the bathroom or the kitchen or whatever. No, but inside a place. It's not something you do in public. And and yeah, I mean, it was kind of difficult, but really my boyfriend understand. did a very good job. He was a gentleman since the beginning. Nice that you don't have to go through that process again, right? Oh, yeah. there was a time when we had fights mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm going to open that profile. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember what was it. I got it. <laughs> Bad experience. Yeah. yeah. And my last question for the day, um, when you look at your experience in Leiden, what is the coziest, most gezellig memory that you have of Leiden? For me, it's uh, always uh, when, when it's sunny, Leiden is the most beautiful place on earth for me. And uh, having an ice cream, you know, and just uh, going around, uh, walking next to a canal. I mean, what about you, Verna? Very nice. Well, I think my coziest memory is the night I arrived here. Um, my, my my boyfriend picked me up from the HSA in Amsterdam. We came here and we had nothing. Like, not we didn't have floor, we didn't have curtains, and we we used like a, an inflatable mattress. And, and it was so nice, you know. It, I was uh, I was thinking you really don't need much to be happy. And and from there, yeah, we changed. We we fixed everything at home, but I really like that. It's my coziest memory. Beautiful. When you sometimes when you have the least, that's the most, huh? Yeah, I think so. it's not about that, well how much you have, right? No, it's not. It's uh, just basically what makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for being in our studio today and sharing your lovely stories. That's the end of another episode of Hello Leiden. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us. Please do not forget to like and share with your fellow Leideners. We are almost on all social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. 
and Instagram as well. And if you are a foreigner, just like Ariane and Bernard today, uh, share their stories. And if you have a story to share with fellow Leideners, please email us hello Leiden at slotostad.nl. Have a good night. It was Zama Bosanova with you for Slotostad TV. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Good Leiden. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, Podai Leiden.